Uh, what do you want to change it to? We are going to totally right now. <laughs> We're going to uh, reschedule it for May 4th. May 4th. May oh, the 4th. I don't think we can do that's the 4th. That's a Mother's Day, huh? That's, that's a Mother's uh, Tea. That's a Mother's Okay. <laughs> then we Oops. will do. The next one? May 11th. Alright, May 11th it is. You know, spread the word, don't tell anyone. Your Come on down. Yeah, sure. Thea, your mom agrees. Damn, you guys are hard crap. I thought I was going to try Come on, come on. Hi, Roger. Come on down. I said spread the word, don't tell anyone. I heard it. Okay. I, I didn't hear that, that part. I guess. <laughs> got a, got a birthday Everybody Thursday. heard it. I didn't see it. We also have a birthday Thursday. Gotta love the honesty in church. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, well, nobody knows. Oh, everybody knows except you, so. We'll just wait till Thursday. <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> No, he's, no, he's still in Alabama. Yeah, or not in Alabama. On Thursday. Thursday. He's, he's, he's in New Mexico, man. Yeah, and then Matt's not going to be here because he, okay. left, he left us. He's still, he's, us. Yeah. he's still on his way back. Oh, man. I said, why'd you forsake me? <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers for what we might get into tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, we're getting to good stuff, Dory. Bring it. It's all good stuff. That's right. Bring it. Our spirit and recovery to be it all. Uh, women's tea. Women's tea. All right. Oh, yeah. A council meeting. A council meeting. Council meeting on the 28th. 27th, we got something too. Men's and women's Bible study. Mm-hmm. What? Or breakfast. 27th is uh, right. 27th. men and women's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did I say something else? What? No. Okay. Did I say something else? Yeah. Okay. So 27th it is. 28th, council meeting, May 4th. And BBS to be dated. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Leah, where are we at? You know, it'll be fun. 15. 15, 16. 15. Okay, we're on March 15. Yeah, 15, then add one. Dang, I thought we got a little further. The Lucky says that now you can lose. That's right. I remember now. Lucky I was polite. But I don't think that's really where we're going. They asked for Barney. <laughs> yeah. 15, where are 16. we, Jacob? Take us there. Tell us what it's about. And why we go there? When the Romans. Ah. How do you forget the book? I know it's first. Some, I, I, I get it first. First Thessalonians. First John. I see a lot. But no. First Peter. Thirteen. Thirteen. Hey, there you go. You got it. You got it. Tell us what it says. Um, and these three things remain faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Amen, right? Love. Why don't we say amen to that? What are we going to say? Quick, why do we Bible? go there? <laughs> 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 many times that these attributes are all in the Bible. Yeah, in the Gospels, we can see them being acted out, right, through Christ? Right, and he gives us an example of what we're supposed to be like. I love Jake, his word, both right? Jacobs forgot to pray in. Oh yeah, we did. I did. Yeah, did. Yeah, no. right. Oh yeah. I can't take credit yet, Jerry. Oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Jerry called us out. Good, good job, Jerry. call. All Jake has in the Georgia. Yeah, you know what? It is, Y'all got excited. <laughs> you got spirits here. We got excited. Got sure. I was hoping someone would. <laughs> That's you know what it is? He lost his beard. <laughs> <laughs> he lost his beard, so he lost his beard. Oh, yeah, <laughs> younger. Okay. Fatter? We'll go with fatter. Thinner? <laughs> I feel a little fatter. <coughs> That's a good thing, though, because you want to gain weight, no? It is. I think I have been gaining weight. It's nice. It's nice. Um, all right, let's pray in, right? Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you for today. Um, uh, we hope that you uh, you uh, open our ears and our, our mind, Lord, and our, our eyes so that we can... See what you have in store for us tonight, Lord. Uh, forgive us for our sins, so that we may dwell with you in the presence of the Word, Lord. Um, bless the study ahead, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. All right, all right, all right. 16, <laughs> right? 15, 16? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, 15, 16. Of Mark. Oh. I remember because we covered. Barabbas? Yeah. Son Bar- of Man? Barney. Barabbas. Barney. Release Barney. Barabbas? We got it. <laughs> Release Barney. <laughs> Question. <laughs> Any questions? All right, hold on. Yes, knows. Did any of you guys 
<laughs> read ahead before we got here today? Anybody? No, I've been in love with gambling. Oh man, I was hoping <laughs> someone was throw the devil wanna help me. Oh, so other than this table. Oh, you you did? Yeah. Oh, praise God. <laughs> I'm like, so I'm sitting there like raising my hand over here. And yeah, probably is. So does Mary. They read their Bible a lot. Yeah, I was just hoping, you know, they might have to. I love my Bible. Any questions, any concerns, any like old revelations, the mm -hmm. Lord shared with them. No, I usually stick to revelations for that one. Mm -hmm. Any comments, that questions, concerns? All right. Well, let's get to it. Right? Verse 16. Here we go. It me. I don't know how to say it. It says, the soldiers led Jesus away into the palace, that is, the praetorium, and called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him, then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews, again and again. They struck him on the head with a staff and spit on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put, on his, own put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. Well, the purple robe, purple was royalty in that day, so, so they mocked them. I think purple still represents royalty. Yeah. So that's what they were doing. It was like, you call yourself a king, you know, and so um, they, they mocked him. They, you know, put a, put a crown on him, and, you know, but, but it was a total mocking and a beating, too. And he didn't call himself a king. Everybody else did. He did say, my kingdom is, you know, he, 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 but he, that God was yeah. his mother, you know, yeah. yeah. They knew who he was. What do you guys think about the crown of thorns? The crown of thorns was just a crown, like, like, the, like the worldly crown. That's all they wanted to earn. What is it symbolic of? Oh, tell me. I don't know what I was asking you. <laughs> you know, I, I swore you were going to drop some huge revelation. Yeah, I was, like, I was waiting. <laughs> I was super excited. Anybody have an idea? Maybe? It reminds me of the parable of the sower. All right. Like getting Explain. caught up in the thorns. Ooh. So what would that represent then? Well, that, that part of the parable is the spirit getting caught up by the world mm -hmm. and being yeah. slowed down and oh, not so being able to... Uh, so you think it's like a? So what would it, what would the crown of thorns represent then? Like if you were to, so he's that, the king of something, right? The mm -hmm. sin was in that you no know, thorns because that spike and wouldn't that be like sin? <laughs> no? Maybe I don't know. You got it. You got it. Come on, man. Come on, man. You got anything to like back it up with? Or? Me. No, I don't know. I was just, uh, just, 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 just thinking. You got anything? What? The in the yeah. Moses time, wasn't like there's a cross and there was a symbol? The snake on the yeah. The snake on the wood. That's what pagan. It? A pagan, right? Wouldn't that like? No, that was to heal the people, to right? Heal the people. <coughs> Look. Look to the snake for healing, and that was a that was a symbol like the rope symbolized Christ. Look to Christ for healing, and they couldn't be also like, like the cross, like the cross and the symbol. Because snake is they have part of snake sin. It said that certainly represents the future attempt to humiliate Jesus as part of his right from kingship. Yeah. <laughs> The crown of thorns? The crown of thorns? I'm trying to find a, a scripture for it. Um, what what did, what did, what did, you guys remember being a king? This event in Spock demonstrated exactly who Jesus is. Jesus is king of glory. Uh, I'm trying to find where we could get that. You guys remember what uh, what affected Paul? So writing. that's okay. So I'm out for right now, and I just took me to it, had, and I've been stuck on it. Okay. So hopefully that it's, it is what it is. All right. But it was on Ezekiel. Bring it to us. Right. It was Ezekiel 28:24, and it says, "There shall be no more a prickling barrier oh, let's go there real quick. the house of ooh, Israel." Ooh, ooh. Ezekiel 24. Yeah. Ezekiel. Um, I like Ezekiel. 
I just presented a question. I got a lot of response. Twenty-four what? Twenty-four what? Twenty-four what? I'm sorry, 28, 24. 28, 24. Yes. Careful. Pride becomes a ball. Mm -hmm. boom, 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 boom. I never watched Pride Ball. I always just thought it was really cool. Excited about getting there. I know. Oh, I was yeah. just warning. <laughs> I was just warning because usually when you get there, you just start to go up higher a little bit, and then you end up falling. Sometimes it's good, and sometimes it's not so good. No, it is not. Where are we at? 28, 24? Yeah. Yes. Alright, go ahead. It says, <laughs> actually, no, then it's good. And there shall be no more apricot barrier into the house of Israel, nor any grieving thorn of all that are round about them, and despise them, and they shall know that I am Lord God. Does that have anything to do with it, by any chance? Because I was reading... And with Paul, oh, and it's, it kind of goes with it. it, yeah. And it says, for the because uh, I was reading oh, Second yeah, Corinthians right. 12 mm -hmm. 7, and it said, At least I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation <coughs> given me to me a thorn in the flesh, and then that took me to Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that has anything to do with the. What was the Second Corinthians verse? Oh, the thorn, well, the thorn. Well, yeah, well, three well, times he prayed well, to well, take well, it away. Yeah. What do you think that thorn represented? My Paul? grace is sufficient. That's, that took me to Ezekiel, okay. and I haven't been able to so, figure it okay. out. I got, I got in Matthew twenty-seven, Matthew twenty-seven, twenty-nine. That's not possible. So I go to twenty. They, they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And then they twisted together a, thorn, a crown of thorns and sat it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand, and they knelt him in front of they knelt in front of him, in front of him, and mocked him. Hail the king of the Jews! I guess it was a representation of his kingdom of the Jews. Yeah. All right. So kingship the thorns the Jews, represent kingship. The thorns. The thorn. The thorns on the crown. Like you have the crown. Right. Now, we just read now what does the thorn too. part of it represent? So why is it a crown of thorns? But what the actual thorns represent? Yeah, what do they represent? It's a crown of thorns, right? A crown means you're a king of something. Well, tell us. Mm -hmm. Please tell us. I don't want to tell you guys. I want to you guys. Oh, you know, come on. No. But I'm having fun. Tell you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, always, I always had the idea that the crown of thorns represented uh, the start of him taking on our sins before he just walked to the cross to give his life. Yeah, we have. All right, so like, uh, how were you reference that scripture? <laughs> Joshua 13, Joshua just, 23, 13. That's just what I thought. That's all, that's all what I thought. Joshua 23, 13 is kind of like on track with that too. That's an, another part of the reference from Ezekiel. Okay. It's, What's uh, it? 23, 13? Yes. Yeah. It says, uh, Know for certain that the Lord your God will, will no longer drive out these nations from before you, but there shall be snares and traps to you and scourge on your sides and thorns in your eyes until which you perish from this God our good land which the Lord your God has given you. Oh, what is that? What's good that? Joshua what? Uh, 20, yeah, that bag is my, yeah, my, my statement up. Is what, <laughs> what I want to prophecy. This is Joshua there. So what is it? <laughs> yeah, what is the representation of it then? The actual thorn. Think about it. Well, I could be wrong. Well, no, but well, so what is your interpretation of it? You, you, you just said you could be wrong. I could be wrong. Right? So, well, we want to hear what you're, we want your take on it. All right. So, I feel like it's. I like super, going. I feel like it's super in line with what I was saying with the parable of the sower, right? It's about the world trapping the spirit right. and, and keeping the spirit from the world, basically. Right. Trying to choke out. Yeah. Choke out the word. Trying mm -hmm. to choke out the spirit. I absolutely agree. Did you know you sin, sorrow, and hardship, though? Because also to the mockery like of a wooden crown is almost like what we were talking about on Sunday with Paul seeing the idols as well. Like it's the whole joke of it all. Like they weren't taking, they didn't never took him seriously. Enough. So was the was the purple robe then? Um, oh, like a oh like a mocking. All right, here we symbol? go. 
So here's something it, it makes kind of sense. You, you, the thorn, the thorn is the most. Is that Alexa is, telling you that? What? <laughs> <laughs> you find me, I'll find the scripture. I'm just telling you what it says here, but I'll find the scripture for it. But this, this is the definition of it. The thorn is one of the most ancient symbols in the world. Together with the rose, it represents pain and pleasure. And the thorn is an emblem of Christ's passion. Mm. Yeah. As yeah. the crown of thorns. You knew. Passion and crown of passion. You knew. The thorn yeah, itself I, represents I like pain I and pleasure. It sounds, yeah. The crown of passion sounds like something I heard growing up. Like, okay. That just rang a bell. How does that's why they titled the name The Passion of the Christ. Oh, <laughs> well, no, like, that, that, I mean, that. that but like, how would that connect to scripture? You know, the passion. That's what I'm finding. That's what I'm looking for. I'm still looking for it. Um, well, it was fulfilling the right, so purpose. I know you guys are waiting on what I'm thinking, but I want to keep this going. I don't want to just say it and this is what's. Uh, oh, well, that's it. Yeah. You know, I, I like how this is going. You know? uh, that's why I was waiting on it. And that's not here. Symbols in the world. So. With the rose. Pain and Paul mentions a thorn in his side plenty of times throughout the scriptures, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. and um, a lot of uh, a lot of people speculate that that thorn was when Stephen was being stoned, right? Which would represent is like that uh, is it, it's that person the persecution that Paul inflicted yeah. on the church mm-hmm. right it, and that was what haunted him but it, it was like that person that, that person that affected him right so mm-hmm. like I always saw like the thorn uh, being the people so mm-hmm. it was like the crown of people mm-hmm. right you know like the savior of the world you know kind of mm-hmm. thing that's how I've always but that's what we said earlier well, I could be wrong but, that's the same. but also it says here <laughs> You were wrong. And it says also the play by Jesus captured both to cause him pain and to mock him and to mock his claim of authority. Yeah. So that's what the thorns are for? I believe so. So I'm trying to find the scripture that goes that ties into it. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm gonna need another page. I, mean, I don't think anybody's wrong, right? It's like what it no. means to I know. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm on it. Well, I'm on like, it. I'm on it like a bloodhound. There's like Hang a real on. truth though, right? Like what Here we go. No, 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 no. I ain't got your time. I'm going to dig it out myself. That's, that's asking for a cheat sheet. You know me. That's for a cheat sheet. I'll dig and dig and dig. Here's so what, here's what Allie up. says. I was, I was thinking it could be the crown of the world. And he was trading it. He was trading it for the heavenly crown. I, I was I was just contemplating the same thing. It's like you know, he, at the beginning of taking on the, the sins of the world. You know? All right, I got you. Here we go. Okay. There you go. Where are we at? It's in First Corinthians. Let's go. First Corinthians nine twenty five. It says here, everyone who competes in games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but okay. we do it to get a crown that will last forever. That's what it represents. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. He's talking about a crown, a certain crown. It's in the scripture, though. Right. What, what, what crown is he talking about? The crown's going to last forever. Yeah, but like, isn't that a specific crown? Hold on, let me get there. What was it? No. Hear what it said. Hear what it said. Sorry. It said, okay. everyone who competes in games goes into it strict, into, into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. Yeah. A medal. But an we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Yeah. Right. The, the thorns represent the everlasting life. Mm-hmm. You see, what you here, here was what my thought was, okay? Okay, your turn. And I had to find the scripture to back it up with, too. Because <laughs> of what you kept saying. So, what I thought was going back to the parable of the sower and the seeds right and when you're reading that he tells us um on verse 22 of matthew 13 says the one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it and make it unfruitful right so it's talking about the things of this world it's what, the world, he, the what they put on top of them, what the thorns were supposed to represent, was the things of this world, the deceitfulness, the pretty much all of the sins put onto into um, the crown, crown that he wore. That? 
Yeah, and then even saying. went to death for it. But what does that sentence say with the thorn dripper then? It does no, say what it is. That's what it says. It says the thorns the thorn choke the worries, yeah. the oh, worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it. That's what the thorns represented in that. It's almost like what we say for what is it the um as it is in heaven, right? Like the what happens Your world here. Be done. Uh, well, like what happens <laughs> here happens in the spiritual world oh, and for stuff what? like that. It's yeah. like him literally being crowned now, spiritually, right? Now he said like how he died for us for our sins that we did and what and he when he's trading it for the sins of to be to be to being free mm -hmm. now trading those now sins. what i love i'm reading alice <laughs> was when i was reading this Alan and i love that the <laughs> trading of the Where sins are, go girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's trading the beginning and taking on the sins mm -hmm. that's what i that's what i saw when i um read this him then putting that crown on was the beginning of trading That's those sins like, it onto his body. It denotes, it denotes the sins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, but, now, when he goes into between the Father and he lays down a crown at the uh, feet of the Father, what crown is he putting there? Mm -hmm. Tell me. In my mind, he was putting that crown of thorns still down at the Father's feet of an act of what he did is now at the Father's feet, and He's giving all glory back to the Lord. Giving it back to the Lord, yeah. Giving, okay. everything giving it back, back to the Lord, Lord right? But yeah. I got in Timothy four eight because He has the authority over the world. But Timothy four eight until He gives that crown back. It has exactly. it actually has it. It, it, it represents both. Like it says this is it. I think this is it. For physical training is of not is of some value, but godliness has value over all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. Yeah, yeah. Goes Where's that at? Where's that at? I think yeah, with what you're saying. I think that's it. Because it's Never like what, what he's trying to find out where he was. Timothy. It's also in Timothy. Yeah, it's in Timothy 4.8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. The achievements in life, the achievements in this world are nothing. And we spend our life trying to be these people or trying to get a high position or trying to get an award. Or, or first place in our game or whatever, you know, it's, it's, it's all an achievement, right? But it's nothing. And it's all going to fall and, and be nothing. I mean, you can't even take those achievements and say, look what I did. I got first place. Like, like here's, here's a good one I heard. Um, like this guy, that they were talking about, oh, we should give attendance pins for church. Oh, look, look, I got all, I got five years of attendance. And, and the guy says, yeah, take that. Take that five year. Go show Paul your five year pin, and he's gonna show you the scars and, and stuff that he endured for sharing the gospel. It's at least things in this life don't mean anything. What what has meaning is the lives we touch for Christ, and and it's laying down all that other stuff because all that other stuff's choking it out. It is the it is a crown of thorns. It is the briars, the thistles. It's gonna choke out. It's gonna choke out the light that he gave us. He gave us to share, and, and that's what that's why we're still here. And it's always gonna be our purpose. Okay, I'm reading Second uh, Timothy the four. Um, four verse eight. Yeah. Yeah. Verse eight. Now that one to me is the crown of righteousness. Right. Oh, which is what another one. That is what it's saying, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearance. Right, and, right. We, and, and when we pass on to that next life, when we get to the judgment day, right, what does he, what does he have authority over? Everything. He has authority over the people, right? Mm -hmm. Authority over everything. And right. so he lays all of that authority. So I got I got another one. In Go James, James 1.12. <laughs> right, this is the one who perseveres in the Wait, wait, wait. Oh. Let us get there. <laughs> Let us get there. James, well, I'll read it when you guys get there. So, I was right. Well, well kind of. <laughs> you guys did it. James what? James 112. 112. Okay. Are we there? Are we there? There it is. When you're not there, you've got, got to speed up. Okay, James. James. Blessed right. is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life, 
-hmm. that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Amen. So is the crown of life and the crown of righteousness two different things or the same thing? I would say yeah. it's the same. Well, yeah. 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 They, they fall together. Yeah. Yeah. Fall when together. I was young in my walk, I used to think there were two different things. I think there were like four different crowns that are mentioned in, in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. I used to think they were all different. I think as I've gotten... So I think, I think basically all of them... All of them a representation of the mm -hmm. and and it's those crowns we we receive crowns for people we lead to to Christ, and and it's the crowns in the other life. Mm -hmm. And you know what? When we have those crowns, we ain't even gonna feel worthy to wear them in front of Him. We're gonna lay our crowns down. It says that we lay ours at Jesus's feet, and then Jesus takes His and lays His at the Father's feet. And turns all authority back over to the Father when the last enemy death is defeated. Wow. Which is like after the thousand years, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, there's a new After a thousand year reign, that's when uh, the world buddy comes back out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When the world buddy comes back out. Yeah, there's some Christians that believe that we are living that right now. What? That a thousand year. At the end of a thousand years. No, he's still locked up in the abyss right now. Because we haven't heard the trumpet yet. <laughs> the thousand year reign. I'm just saying that there are some Christians out there. It's the reign of Christ when Christ is already oh, here. Okay. That's when the thousand year reign the thousand year reign starts. Yeah, there's people who are dying in the like post revelation. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of different theories of rapture. Know, there's pre, post, and, and mid trip. But um, it's you know what? Read it, read it, and find out. You know, because like good. like six it, months to figure it out. Wait, just, every single version. Just like Second, uh, second just like Thessalonians people, people screams the, it to me. Right the last the days. The, people think the, the last prayer. days. We're in the last days of the preacher. There was another uh, thing that the last days started when Jesus was born. There's a lot of stuff out there. Mm -hmm. They say they say it started when Israel became a nation again too. It's a, it's a, yeah, it, it just there's so much stuff, you know. And you can read into it. You could try and theorize, and you know, no, that's what people do and try here, and pre here. predict that people hey. try and predict the date too. And you know, it's, it, uh, we have a saying too. It's like you, when anyone says that um, like that this is going to be when the tribulation or when the rapture happens. You can know that it's not going to be that day because <laughs> no one knows. <laughs> yeah. No one knows the day or the hour. It doesn't say the year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just making a joke. Well, I mean, even it's... what Enoch knew the year. <laughs> yeah. He named his son, and it. Yeah. It was Methuselah. He still didn't know the day or the when hour, he died, but he knew the judgment. year. <laughs> when he right. died, the flood happened. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I theorize when my son dies. <laughs> but the, the but fact, that had to be a special The fact of it all yeah. is to, to like, like I love the, the image of, of Paul talking about the thorn in his side. You know, the thorn... The thorn, yeah, many people speculate. Some people speculate that it was a physical ailment. You know, he had, they, they had bad knees, he had bad eyesight, you know, and probably a lot of damage to his physical being from being stoned to death and, and, and whipped and beaten. But yet, um, a lot of people believe that it's, um, that it's the suffering, you know, for what he did. Because he persecuted the church. He was going to Damascus to have Christians arrested. He took letters, you know, and um, and he was there approving at Stephen's death, you know. And, um, and so in that, I, I believe that that, that, that suffering is what drove him to try and do better, to try and, because he knew, and he knew he should know better if he knew, you know. But he, he counts all what he knew before as rubbish, because without Christ, it is nothing. Without Christ, knowing all his law and stuff is nothing, because there's there is no salvation without Christ, and, and that's what that's what Paul was that's what Paul suffered, you know. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, you know, Jesus forgave us of our sins, but isn't there each one of us still something we carry, something we like are remorseful for, something that we wish we hadn't have done or could undo, but yet, you know what? We gotta let it go, cause cause um. <laughs> Christ oh, forgave us for, you know, and and in that, use it to drive you, use it to do better, use it to remind you of what you've been forgiven of and where you came from, so that so that man, I'm not that person anymore, and then it and then starts to be like 
like Matt said it before, it's like it just an odd, an odd like watch a movie. Who was that? You know, because you're not that person anymore. You know, I had a unique chance to start over when I started going to church. We had we were I was having a problem at a job, and I and I just prayed about it, and um. It, just long story short, you know, I prayed, Lord, I don't know what, I don't know what, just, Lord, just help me. You know, it was a month later, I started a new job, you know, an old boss called me out of the blue. But the way I bring this up is because I was trying to change my life at that point, and I got a fresh start at a new company with people that didn't know me, and so they didn't try and tell me the coarse jokes that I had been falling into all the time or all the junk. So I got a chance to to, to just leave all that behind and ha not have people bringing it up and a chance to shine. And it was a beautiful start, and I, I really thank God for that because... Through that, through that, I was able to blossom into sharing with people. I went, I went to customers and started sharing the word with them. You know, every service call I went, I started sharing with them all the time. And it was, you know, it wasn't deep. It was, it was, you know, it started out just simple. You know, of, uh, you know, hey, isn't it a beautiful day? Yeah, look at what God made us. You know, some way to mention God, some way to mention God in the conversation. And when you see people take that. Use it like a fishing lure, right? And when when people take that, you can see their reaction. And when they and when they do react in a positive way, it feeds you and inspires you to do more. You know, and, and that's where that's where Paul was at with his with his walk, you know. Um, he just used it, used it to drive him. So that's what we got we gotta know that God's working a work in our life and he's not gonna stop till he completes it. It's not going to be a gravy train. It's not going to be a cakewalk. Um, it, there's going to be hardships. Jesus said it. You will be persecuted. But but trust that through that, God's God's working and working us. And through that, there's there's testimonies that come out of it that are going to save people's lives. We just need to persevere no matter what. No matter how deep it gets, no matter how bad it gets, we need to push. We need to push and shine the light. That's what this life's about, shining light. Shining light. That's why we're here. When do the last days start? What do you mean? When? When it says we're living in the last days, when did that start? Like when does the last days start? When did it start? It started a long time ago. It's in the Bible. Right, the the last age? The last days. When did it start? The last days, the last days. When the Holy Spirit came down? When did it come down? When did it pour upon us? When Jesus rose? When Jesus died rose. Heaven. That's when the last day started. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. End of the age? A lot of people think it's still, it's still it's starting. It's barely starting. It's starting when he, when he right. dies and he rose. Yeah. We're in our birth pains right now. Yeah. Um, it hasn't started yet. The labor hasn't started yet. Yes. Mm. We're, yeah, exactly. So had, We're in the labor. My right boss now. called me. Oh, yeah, no, that's the uh, birth pains, right? Yeah. And we were, we, were, uh, we were talking about. Huh? Yeah. We were supposed to talk about something at work. And he's like, dude, I almost told you on, that you were like, on Saturday night. I thought the end of the. I thought, uh, I thought the uh, tribulation was starting because we heard all the new stuff on the news. Uh, and I was like, and then we had like almost like a 40 minute conversation with Ezekiel. Oh, wow. Yep. Yeah, you know, over it because I was like, well, I don't know. Well, I don't know. Like, I've never really studied this. <laughs> I've never cared for it. I love it. I never heard of this, but, uh, right. you know, but it, we went over scripture, and I was like, well, maybe, you know, I think, I think there's a, I think there's other things that got to happen first. Right. You know? Like, I think, yeah, they could be retaliating, but there's I a, think are, and I think if you're paying attention, I think they're about retaliating. The whole world's going to turn its back on Israel. The whole world. And that includes, if we are still around, it includes us. Mm -hmm. You know, um, maybe maybe not us as individuals, but us as a country, us as a nation. So whoever is in power is going to, you know, turn against Israel. But it says the whole world will turn her back on her, and the whole world's going to attack from all sides. And and when they do, God's going to directly intervene in that. He's going to thwart that attack. Mm -hmm.
I think that's going to be cool. I'd have to dig scary. and search to find that. I know it's in here. <laughs> is this one like a figure of the Antichrist comes? World, kind of like a world peace, I think. Maybe one, a one uh, currency type of thing. A yeah. Of oh, you exactly. mean MasterCard? Oh, yeah, that's yeah. all over the world. <laughs> 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 there like yeah, the temple that he's going to rebuild? That? <laughs> the temple's going to be rebuilt. Look, here's, here's, the my, temple. <laughs> here's my perception of all this. Look, and you can read it in 2 Thessalonians. There is a seven-year peace treaty coming that's going to be a peace treaty with Israel. I believe part of the negotiations that bring that peace treaty in is, a, a, okay, we're going to rebuild your temple if, you know, and, and, and it's going to, you know, it's going to bring a seven-year peace treaty. The person that, that um, brings that treaty about is the Antichrist. He's not going to come into the power until the the Bible says, until the one that withholds him is taken out. And that's believed to be the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's holding him back now. But once the Holy Spirit's taken out of the world, how's how is the Holy Spirit in the world right now? Through us. Through us. Because he lives in us. That, now is he gonna take his spirit away from us? No. 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 The Bible promises. Out. So we get taken out. Yeah. And when we get taken out, there's nothing to withhold this Antichrist to come in into power. Right. And he's going to be the deceiver. The I world's going to be in turmoil when the believer get pulled out. Right. And so he's going to have all the answers. He's going to bring a peace. People are going to be looking to him. Oh, look, here's our Savior. You know, he's going to bring in this peace treaty and a seven year period. The timer starts at that point. Do you think it's Trump? <laughs> no, 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 I wish. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Calm down, Jacob. <laughs> I didn't tell this one earlier. I'm, I'm joking. I, I believe the Bible talks that he is going to come from the Middle East. No, so I, but if you if you take out, I think it's one of the church letters. Uh, I think it's First John. He talks about um, that there's antichrists everywhere. Yep, and I think it's just. The when, the, when the time comes, it's like whoever is holding That's, more of it within themselves. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. And they'll be the ultimate symbol of it because they'll rise to power because they'll put in the power. Mm -hmm. you know? I don't think it's going to be like a specific symbol we see right. now. It'll just be like when that time is appointed. That's when it'll. Mm -hmm. That's when it'll come to that point. People you know? been guessing for years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it, it's no, oh, it's tricky, Bill. Oh, it's Bush. Oh, it's. Uh, that's why I don't get into the end times because you you want to focus more on what we do as a uh, what we do as a body of Christ. Like, yeah, we're here to not look for the Antichrist, but to get people ready. Yeah. Um, and give their lives to the Lord. You know, we live in such a way that we live as examples that people want to live the same right. way. And that's what we should focus on. Yeah. You know, it's not about hiding in our hiding in our house and waiting for the Antichrist to come. Ooh, look, look, it's happening. I see it. <laughs> this is it's gonna be tomorrow. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The eclipse is gonna bring it on. The 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 blood moons are gonna bring it on. Oh it's I'm not it's, saying it is. The Aztec calendar. It's yeah. Oh, you. you know, those are all fun things. <laughs> But you're right. I, I agree with what you're saying. It is in the Bible. When the spirit's taken out, that's when, when God's body yeah. is taken out. Yeah. The body of Christ is taken out. And so I believe we read a lot of turmoil, the seals being broken open, a lot of God's wrath being poured out on this world. And I believe that we're not going to be here for it. Nope. We're gonna, but we're going to go through a lot of stuff. There are going to be sufferings. There are going to be martyrs. There's going to be, and it's yeah. happening. It's happening all around us. Yeah, I think it'll be, I think it'll be a fun time. It'll look like you know, eighty sixty all over again, just on a bigger scale. Like what? Eighty sixty. When Nero rose to power. Oh, yeah. You know, and, <laughs> like devastated the Christians and yeah. Rome. There's some terrible persecution going on in the world right now. We're we're just we're we don't we don't see a lot of it. Probably Hitler's that bad compared to some of the previous ones before. Oh yeah, there's a the most recent just attacked yesterday. The bishop yeah, Mar Emmanuel Mariamar got see well, he was the man pulled a knife on him and stab, was trying to stab him uh, during his sermon on life. But when he went to go like deflect the second. 
uh, swipe, his cross, because he, he put his hand up like that, his cross jammed his knife so it wouldn't reopen, so he oh. just ended up hitting him with, like, the blunt end of it. <laughs> wow. Amen. Yeah. That's Praise awesome. God, huh? Yeah, right? Maybe we're going to run for more really? service. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been a good service. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, right, yeah, yeah, I can get a finish my service. Yeah, did he get back up and finish it like Paul? Orlando. Yeah, right. <laughs> Orlando's <laughs> fish. I like Orlando this. Huh? Orlando's fishing. Yeah. He's doing Reel him back in. Let's get back. <laughs> all right, all right. Back to it. Back to it. All right. Back to it. Back to it. Okay. All right. Any other questions on that section? Like a minute of the murder. I'm pretty sure. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Back to Mark Paul. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what he said. So now we know what the crown of thorns means. <laughs> it took us that long to do it. No, now we know what the thorns mean because we basically knew what the, 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 the crown meant. Yeah, yeah. The crown of You're right. The now we know thorns. what the thorns We dug were. into the thorns. Yeah, yeah. That was a good study, huh? Yeah, I love that. I enjoyed that. I that was dig. probably one of the best moments we've had here. Now, now we have 30 dig. minutes left. <laughs> All right. 20. <laughs> We finished 20. No, I leave those 30 no, we have oh, no, no, I'm sorry, we're on 20, you're right. No, he said we had 30 minutes off, I said 20. Oh. <laughs> 29. <laughs> 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 you guys keep backwards. Should have sure we don't go over. So right. <laughs> all right, you guys have any question <laughs> about what they did to Jesus? Negative. No, it all makes sense? It's all yes, straightforward? Sir. Makes you cry your eyes out? I literally cry when I'm at home. Trust me. I see, I keep seeing them. Especially when they like when I read them and everything you went through, it breaks my heart. Yeah. You know, you can picture him. Went through. You can picture him enduring that and just, just looking you dead in the eyes and saying, I'm dealing this for you. Oh, ball. I, I break down like a little kid. For you. Trust me. And there's a saying, too if we were the only person in the world, he would still have wanted to. He would still have those guys. Yep. Just like uh, like you saw, we talked yes. about the shepherd, the one that got away. Don't you, don't you chase after the one and leave the ninety nine? Huh. Yeah. Why do you worry about the ninety nine? Not worried about them. They're already they're already good. Yeah. Do I have to touch everything? All right, here we go. You guys ready for the next section? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. It says a certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country and they forced him to carry his cross they brought jesus to the place called golgotha which means the place of the skull then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh but he did not take it and they crucified him dividing up his clothes they cast lots to see which what what each would get it was nine in the morning when they crucified him the written notice of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. <clears throat> they crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed hurled the insults at him, or those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, so you are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days. Come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. <coughs> Those crucified with him also heaped insults on him. That deep. You know, it kind of reminds me of that... Uh, that epistle? Which one? The letter to Diognetus. Oh, yeah. When he talked about how um, the spirit is to the body compared to the Christian is compared to the world. Yeah. You know, like, <clears throat> they're they're trying to physically see him as a king. You don't have right. to with you, do you? No, I don't. I'm going to write back like that maybe one day. Chapter 6, if you find it. Chapter 6. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> but it... Um, in this letter, he's trying to convince a guy who's an idolater because um, he's looking for the truth um, that Christianity is the way to be. And he, he gives it like he gives a, a worldly metaphor to understanding what 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 the Christian is like and the way that the spirit is 
uh, to the body and how the Christian is to the world is the same. It's the same kind of metaphor. Mm. Because what I see here is that they're wanting him to come down from the cross because they know what comes next, right? If you read Isaiah 50, no. One of the Isaiah chapters, I don't know which one. I'm not going to say it because I'm not going to know. But I know it's in Isaiah. But it's about he comes as a lamb and then he comes as a lion or something like that along those lines. And uh, and um, so they're, they're seeing him as that lamb part and they're wanting him to uh, come down so that he can rule over Rome because they know what's next, right? Because the ones who do believe, they think that he's going to rule over Rome. Right, put Rome in its place, and then they're going to rule the world pretty much. So that's why they're hurling some of these insults. So they're trying to see him as a, as a, as a it, it as a physical thing. Mm-hmm. You got it. I'll read it. Sure. Just listen to this. This is so what beautiful. Did I said. This is the letter to Diognetus. This is uh, this is a, a first century. One of one of the letters that was written after uh, the first. Uh, this guy who wrote this letter was like a. A disciple of the Lord, who was brought up with the original apostles. Mm-hmm. He's like he's like the next generation from the apostles, and he's writing this. He's writing a letter to this guy. Where is it in the Bible? Where is it in the Bible? It's not in the Bible, <coughs> but it's a description. It's a metaphor that okay. he uses to convince. So um, it says to sum it up in one word: what the soul is in the body, that is what Christians are in the world. The soul is dispersed through all body parts of the or all parts of the body. And Christians are scattered through all cities of the world. The soul lives in the body, yet not, is not of the body. Christians live in the world, yet not of, are, of, yet are not of the world. The invisible soul is guarded by the visible body. So Christians are known to be in the world. But their godliness remains invisible. The flesh hates the soul and wars against it, even though it is not harmed because it is prevented from enjoying pleasures. In the same way, the world hates the Christians, though not wounded in any way, because they renounce pleasures. The soul loves the flesh that hates it, as well as its parts. Christians, in the same way, love those that hate them. The soul is imprisoned in the body, yet preserves that very body. Christians are confined in the world as in a prison, and yet they are preservers of the world. The immortal soul dwells in a, mor- in a mortal ta- tabernacle, and Christians live as travelers in perishable bodies, looking for an imperishable home in the heavens. The soul, the soul becomes better when it, is pro- when it is poorly provided food and drink. Similarly, the Christians, although subjected to punishment on a daily basis, keep increasing in number. And, and, and that's what, uh, um, what they're... What they're n- not seeing here is that what the kingdom that was was being brought to them that has not yet made it there yet um, uh, that Christ has been trying to show them but they can't see because the veil's still over their eyes is that it's not about what you can see it's about what's what, what's within us right and that's what I see here is that these people are hurling insults at them trying to see a physical thing mm-hmm. when what Christ brought here was a spiritual thing mm-hmm. right. It talks about like after the fact, um, like people that people that were there, the centurion that pierced his side, you know. Oh yeah, you and, gave his testimony. Yeah, it was true. Yeah, I read that on Easter. These, these <laughs> people. Oh, yeah, you guys forgot Easter. Yeah, I forgot too. <laughs> but these people. <laughs> but these people that were there, right, right now, they they want to believe, but but you know, they're just. They want to believe in something, so then they're like, "Show us, come down off the cross. You save others, save yourself. You know, let's see it. You know, and then we'll believe it. You know, but you adulterous generation. Yeah, but the fact is, I believe, I believe most of them knew something in their hearts, and um, and then when it happened, they saw signs, they saw wonders. You know, when he died, the sky grew dark, and the mountains split. There was an earthquake. You know, and, um. Or the rocks split. They still didn't believe. They, they, then they said, "Surely this was a righteous man." They knew. They knew. Not the Jews. Can you imagine? Can you that imagine was, uh, the remorse? That was the centurion that ended up saying that. Well, yeah. Surely this was the son of God. 
I believe most of them standing there watching, witnessing this. They were hurling insults and stuff. They were all silenced and, and walked away remorseful. Just like Judas. Judas turned him in and then, then he realized it and he went and hanged himself. Just bearing that burden, bearing that guilt of what they did. But you know what? We were no better. We were no better. We knew. We knew at a point and we still we still mocked, we still turned, we still, you know. But he doesn't hold that against us, and that's what's beautiful because even up there he told them. He said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Which book is it? Please for John. Each of them? No. 29? Okay. 29, so it's not the literal temple, huh? Oh, what do you think of that? Well, I just saw it. It's, it what he talks about it's, I think he said the body. Okay. Yeah. So you think the temple's the body? Yes. Yeah, you're correct. Hmm. It's, what the, it's where the temple went. It's not a place anymore. Mm -hmm. It's within us, right? Um, that's where the that's what Matt says all the time, right? The kingdom of heaven was in this because before, if you read the Old Testament, when they're running in the battlefield with the tabernacle in the uh, in the middle of it, that's a representation of Christ being with them, mm -hmm. you know. But that was the previous age. Now we're in the new age where the tabernacle is within us, mm -hmm. right? It's a, yeah. He dwells within us now. Yeah, yeah, but that also goes with you saying that they it was literal to them, like. The right. temples itself are gonna fall. Right, they're one. They, they're only, they can only see with the veil on right now. Right. right, even the disciples didn't get the spirit until after. So wait right here, as I ascend into heaven, mm -hmm. a gift will come down to you. Right. I really like the the Simon carrying the cross part. Like, hey, what do you get from that? Well, so just recently, like Kathy was telling me that she was speaking to a lady at a conference over the weekend that was. That literally like showed her an example the way that like Matt did with the stop sign with you know Paul and stuff like that where she grabbed Catherine by the hand left her shoes where they were and like walked away and told her like we can go and get those shoes right like she's like God leaves us to do the possible while he does the impossible you know and so with that it's like uh, it's not that Jesus couldn't do it you know like obviously all of these things that they were begging of him to do in front of him like he's capable of doing it you know but it was the fact that like leaning on man or at least letting man help in that moment was more or less like part of the physical thing where it's like okay like it, like uh yeah carry the cross or like what i'm doing is going to be way heavier than that you know yeah. like this is fine you know kind of thing basically and i don't know it kind of just just speaks a lot like even in this world like even now today that like, we're called to to carry our own cross you yeah. know and stuff but like we're that also so called to help other carries carry theirs and you gotta understand the beating that was given. But he was already yeah. here. Why would he have to come off the cross? He already showed the world what he can do. And they still didn't believe him. Here's, I wanted to read this whole section. Mm -hmm. So Go for it. It's going to be Take a little bit of a reading, but I'll, reading? I'll, I'll be quick. It's in Luke. Um, exact same story, but more details. Luke 23, uh, starting at 26. The longest book? Of the gospel. Probably. Um, I thought it was 23, 26. I just have more chapters. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Luke, Luke 23, 26. 26. 17 minutes. Get your prayers in. Get your prayers in. Like I said, I'll be quick. All right. It says, oh, still pages. Are we all there? Go. All right. It says, <laughs> as, as they led him away, they seized Simon from Cyrene, who was put on. Oh, my nose is like about to sneeze. Who was on his way from the country, and they put him on. Sorry, they put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. 
Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the barren woman, sorry, blessed are the barren woman, the wombs that never bore and the breasts that have never been nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if men do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when the tree is dry? Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place they called the skull, there they crucified him, along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself, for if he is the Christ of God, the Chosen One. The soldiers came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults on him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said? Since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly for what we are doing. Sorry. For what we are getting by what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. Today, you will be with me in paradise. Sorry, I'm about to sneeze. It's not coming out. So, the reason why I wanted to bring us there was, one, there's a lot more depth on things that were going on. Uh, But... I wanted to go there because of the question and answer that the criminals had. You see two different types of people. Both of them hurled insults at him. That's what you read in Mark. Both of them hurled insults, but then you see one even changing his heart. He's like, he he rebuked him and changed his heart and said, no, he did nothing wrong. But we, we did stuff. We are, we know we're here because of what we've done, but he's done nothing that... Um, yeah. deserves a punishment like this and so they're sitting there talking like this but he's like remember me in your kingdom and Jesus said no I'm, you're going to be with me in paradise today and so every time I read that just it, it always makes me beg a question is where's my heart at am I the one hurling insults at him or am I the one asking him to remember me in his kingdom I like the picture of that too, the the thief on the cross, and this is brought up a lot because people talk about deathbed confessions and stuff, and that you got to go through a ritual, you got to go through this or that. This thief on the cross went through no such thing. He gave a heartfelt asking Jesus, mm-hmm. and 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 in that, I don't know where you're at. All right, been here for twenty years, Matt. <laughs> Why did you have something to add? Hey, well, how you doing? We're we're in Bible study. Did you forget? <laughs> oh, that's not after God. Oh. <laughs> Here we go. You've been doing it for twenty years. I, I thought you were watching and and had something to add. <laughs> oh, that's not how it's going. All right. <laughs> Love you, Matt. Love you. I'll call you in a minute. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> it's only the pastor. <laughs> but but that that thief on the cross didn't he didn't he didn't go get oh, baptized. He didn't he didn't that. speak yeah. in tongues. He didn't you know what? He didn't even offer a sinner's prayer. You know, his heart. And that's you know, I'm not I'm not knocking the sinner's prayer because that that's a guideline for us. Look, we got to give our it's got to be a heartfelt and and yeah. that's what we try to get through when we say the sinner's prayer is like 
look, you need to be repentant. You need to know who he is. And you know, need to know what he's done for you. And you ask him to forgive you. And you ask him to come live in your heart. That's basically it. You know, and, and that's what that's what this, this thief on the cross, it was heartfelt. And, that, and that's what it's all about. It's about surrendering your heart to God. You know, and, and, and it is that easy. There's a lot of stuff that comes after it. You know, baptism, baptism's outwardly saying, hey, this is what I did. This is who I am. I'm dying to myself. You know, it, it helps make us accountable to others. You know, um, there's a lot of stuff. Being a hater. Right? But there's a, there's a lot of stuff, you know what? And we don't, we're not knocking what other people go through. You know, some people, some people need to have these rituals or whatever. But I'm just telling you, salvation is salvation is simple. Because look, here's 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 the recipe, right? Not not so much recipe, but look, God wants His desire is that none would perish, that all would come to eternal life. And so if that's his desire that everyone, then is he going to make it hard? He's going to make it simple. And so when you find that it's hard, hard to understand, just think, wow, I'm, I'm making something out of this because God made it simple. And it's Christ. It's coming to Christ and getting to know him. That's what that thief on the cross did. And it is that simple. Yeah. Yeah. And so we don't know. <laughs> All to know is to make to put ourselves up there, right? In his, in his yeah. Seat. So it's better that we just live as we should, mm -hmm. and then when the day comes, we just party. Yeah. Because everyone who's going to be there is going to be there. Right. Yeah. 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 Raise the roof. No need in saying, "Oh, this guy did it." Or, or, this guy did it. You know. If you we'll see, we won't know until we get there. And if you see people, yeah. And if you see people that, that that's a brother that's claiming to be a Christian, and you see them, you see them doing something wrong. You know, there's a point. We need we need to be there for people, right? Um, but but if their ritual, if their way, is a little different than ours, we just need to point them to the truth. It's not our job. It's not our job to beat them down. It's not our job to try and correct. It's our job to point them to Scripture and the Holy Spirit convicts. The Holy Spirit shows people where they need to stop, what they need to clean up in their life. It's not our job, and it's their decision to make. Yeah. But we need to be there for people and in love and not, and not beating people down. I think it would be a little scary if it was our job. Because yeah. you know what? I wouldn't want that. <laughs> There's a lot That's of people I'm beat people no, down about these do days. And it's like, mm -hmm. you know, I was talking to, I was telling Jordan, I was talking to the nurse over at, at Kaiser. I, got, I was giving blood on Friday. Um, or getting a blood test. Anyway, the lady was talking about how, how these kids are coming up, you know. And she's asking, what what's her name? Oh, she doesn't go by that. She goes by they or them, you know. And, and she's like, no, I need to know your name because this is on record. What is her name? But then she was reading in the Bible, and, and you know what? The demons go by they and them. They don't go by a name. You know, only oh, the only one that did was Legion because there were many. But they go by they and them, and that's, and that's the demonizing of our society right now. It's... You know, God made don't people you. this or that. Don't, don't start on. I'm going down the wrong path, huh? <laughs> but, but, um, but it's, but it's powerful it. that it's powerful that demons go by they and them. You know, and, mm -hmm. and um, it, it, um, Bible talks about this time. You know, they're going to be calling bad good and good bad. They're going to be twisting up everything that God's ordained, everything that God's made sacred, twisting it. And, contorting it and, you know perverting it but you know what we gotta endure and we gotta endure in love and not be beating people down you know i i remember the day when when believers were going and and protesting uh protesting uh the 
the abortion clinic, you know, and, and getting in bad fights and arguments and stuff, and hate, you know, burning down abortion clinics, and that's not right. That's not a Christian. That's not that's not love. You're not going to stop someone from going in there by yelling at them and screaming at them. You're going. You're going to do it by love. We need to be loving, and that's that's it. Love. Because ultimately, we're 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 either going to drop people in, or we're going to put a wall up there, you know. And, and um, putting the wall up's not going to help. No, you got to leave the wall down, and you got to be make them want to make right. them be nice. Yeah, Just be nice to people, no matter who they are. <laughs> Show them Christ. Mm-hmm. Show them Christ, and that's it. It's short, Jeremy. You got five minutes. It's how you prayer. <laughs> I still have it. I guessed it. <laughs> he convinced it. Because he always, he always uh, eliminates things in there. Wrong, sir. I'm sorry, okay? All right, but that's why I condensed it, my brother. I condensed it. I was sure. going to say, I have to also, yeah, I'm trying to please true. everybody. No, I know. <laughs> you know what I'm thinking. Oh. That's why I condensed it. Oh, it's not a term paper? Thank you. Paper. <laughs> well, that's going to be my testimony in term paper. I can't wait. Oh, not a good one. Never mind. <laughs> I, I, I realized what you said. I was about to agree with them, and I was like, wait a second. I said you didn't give them a term paper. I was like, please don't call me off. I'll give you one. Thank you. I love that. Thank you. All right. Anyone else have anything on those verses? God, it, was, it was awesome. <laughs> Just that it was awesome? It was the bomb. I loved it. What well, book do you guys want to do next? Revelation. 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 One of them. All right. Revelation. All in favor. We're going to do this alphabetical. All in favor of the book of Acts? Raise your hand. As long as it's all in two, there. three, Old three. Testament, three. You can't be double dipping and have them come twice. Right? <laughs> <laughs> this is going like this. Everybody's shirt, everybody's shirt, so everybody's looking to vote. Three. <laughs> <laughs> Revelation chapter three, verse eight. 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 Huh? <laughs> Sorry about that. Do, you not, do you not like the Democratic vote? Should we do this Republican? Huh? No. Yeah, yeah, just, just put it in a booth. Put it in a box. He's making a joke. He said Republican. Democrat. Because both of them are going to be the same way. Just put it in a box. I'll change it. It's a, it's a, it's a form of voting. So it's sad what I'm seeing. All right, nation. If we do the book of Revelation. I didn't, I didn't raise my hand. Go on, point you, I'll raise it. For the, all right, all right. Oh, oh. You got I'm four votes. I want, the movie Mike, you said, uh, Acts. I want every, yeah. I want so every I think there's another two study, study. like five. Yeah. Well, we all look into it, because I, I personally have never, like, <coughs> deep studied Revelation, so I'm going to need help. Good for you. I got you. Then you don't watch the end of a movie I, and then I, watch the beginning out. I've dug into that book. I've dug into that book a little bit, so. <laughs> I've dug into it a little bit. Like I've I went through the theories on how people believe and you know I've done that stuff but because the old I've never went into like there. what That's the dragon reason. is or what the lady is like I've the never lady went into is that married. Yeah. You, know who, you know who really Memo Memo's the one. Yeah. So, so, I think, I, I kind so of like what we did today is like perfect. If we do that every single time, like, right, what does this mean? No. What does that mean? Yep. Then it's gonna be a really fun yep. study. Yep. I just love to see you so excited. I don't even care. She's like, if we have that in Revelation, I'll be happy. I love digging, I love though. I love digging, too. That was awesome when we did that. Just keep bringing it slow. She'll be here. And Ali will be here. She's still, still <laughs> more with us. I like it. It's great. It happens. Let her talk over her mic. I'll bring the whole...
Sleeping. <laughs> I second right. that. <laughs> I mean, so. So hold on. Pray for Tina's MRI results. That's what I was gonna ask. So even better. So we brought it up. So you have a doctor on your own. Uh, doc. I gotta hear it. Okay. 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 Any others? I already got yours. I feel crazy. You are supposed to charge for not talking back. You're only slightly. You're only slightly. Love is sad with it. Trust me, he's only dead. By the way, the the work day has been moved up to 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock? Yeah. Well, I mean, I put it at 8, but nobody will be here at 8. I'll be here at 8. That's late for me. I've got it from the previous experience. The previous experience, that one rolls in at 9 anyway. 5 o'clock. Oh, but let's keep it until it rolls in at 9. No, I better not be at 5 o'clock in the morning. Midnight, ten a.m. She went to labor. Oh, okay. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That, that is good. I, I didn't even think so about what, that. What's the date for the workshop? Eleven. Eleven. May eleventh and nine. Well, and then you have to do that. Paid labor. You know. Ooh. All right. Any others? Okay. I got that one. <clears throat> Orlando got it actually. Huh? My head is getting really bad too. Nick. Your interview? Mm-hmm. Your interviews and stuff? School. Attitude, personality. School and kid. <laughs> she said it. Well, I see. I didn't know she was yawning. She's ignoring me tonight. She's what? <laughs> She sneezed, she didn't find a way. I'll repeat on Thursday later. Oh, Thursday? Mm-hmm. Any others? See if you're going to be here Thursday. Thursday. Yes. Yeah, you didn't have one. You just, that was an echo. <laughs> <laughs> you're really funny. That's all right, you got it. <laughs> so I talked a lot of stuff, is what you're saying? Mm-mm-mm. No. <laughs> we all go through moments. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, I just thought I might testing for like a good luck on my testing. <laughs> <laughs> you feel confident more? about it? You need more, more, more prayers for testing. Better be spelling for confidence. Welcome. <laughs> like humbly confident. <coughs> <laughs> Those two things usually don't go together. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yeah, if we do if we do revelation, everyone needs to read. Everyone needs to pray before they read. And get the revelation because that's what this is. A revelation from Jesus. She farted And if you guys want to read the end of Daniel. Because when the vision is caught up and second Thessalonians. Oh second Thessalonians. Yeah, but no, the end of Daniel I get what he's Chapter four. And the end of Daniel, it's like, it's like right into it. It goes right into it. Because like Daniel's like, well, no one can open that scroll. And then he's like, what does that even mean? He's like, don't worry about it. It's not for your time. You know what I mean? And then and then you get into chapter four of Revelation. John gets caught up and he's like, he's like, what's going on? There's so many people here. There's so many things here. There's elders. Oh no. There's a scroll. No one can open it. Who can do this? And the elder comes over to, bro, you know. Come on, bro. I'm like, you know. Christ is the only one able to open it. And then Christ comes out from like, behind the throne. And he's like, boom, 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 boom. Goes over there and he starts opening the scroll. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. He has that going on, too. It doesn't it's say it, but there, yeah. it's there. It's boom. Yeah, there's a theme song going on. <laughs> yeah. I'd be laughing if there was, like, that type of music going in the background, man. John probably was like, what is this? Open it, open it, open it, open it, open it. <laughs> Lord, forgive us. I'm sorry. Or, oh, oh. It's funny. That's negativity. God, I know God has a sense of humor. You want to know why? Because he made me. <laughs> well, you got a point there. <laughs> it's a joke. I've heard that joke. Is she the green? Is she the yep? Yep. Ain't no 
grinding baseball. Really? Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Jacob, I can tell you when you're dead. Got support in your head. Yeah, you cut it. That's too much. No. She just burped. Sorry. It's good to get one of them cropped that diapers and you throw it on your shoulder. Oh, yeah, Drew is so funny. Jacob. Yeah. It was so funny. Dude, like, there you go. Everyone in the room saw it. You'll get better by the chicken one. Just help the bread inside. The beanie. All right. We're all ready to pray. I'm sorry. Yeah, I got distracted by a baby over here. All right. Yep. I'm good at this. You will get. There we go. Hold my hand. We gotta pray. <laughs> All right. There you go. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for everything that you're doing here, Lord, in our lives and every aspect of this church, Lord, with the people and the just everything, Lord. We thank you for it all, Lord. We ask that you would just continue to work through this church, Lord. Continue working through each and every person, Lord. And Lord, we ask that you would just keep getting distracted. Oh. <laughs> we ask that you would have your hand over Roger, Lord, and just, uh, Lord, be with him and be with him and help him with that disability, Judge, Lord. We ask that you would just help him with getting there, Lord, because I know he's still waiting. He's still in that moment of waiting, Lord. We ask that you would just help him with that, Lord. Help him to... Get that meeting with that judge soon, Father, so that he could get the help he needs, Lord. And we ask that you would just have your hand over him to, to be getting the things he needs, Lord. We ask that you would have your hand over uh, okay. over Tina's MRI results, Lord. Be with her, Lord. Help her to help everything to be clear, Lord, that they don't find anything wrong, Lord. Yeah, it's just all corrected. I think of what you did in Emma, Lord. Just healed his kidneys. I think the same for her, Lord, that it was already healed and that they'll find nothing, Lord. That's unremarkable results, Lord. We ask that over him. For her, I mean, sorry. And we also ask that you would continue healing Memo, Lord. Continue, continue being in his life. Continue healing him and giving them that joy every time he sees something healed about him, Lord. It's just amazing, Lord. We just ask this in your name, Lord. We ask that you would uh, have your hand over Allie's doctor appointment, Lord, and help everything to go well, Lord. Help her to help her to be clean, Lord, and that everything's going as it should, Lord. That she's completely healthy, Lord. We ask your hand over uh, over Nick and his interviews, Lord, and the schooling. We ask that you would just be with him, help him to have your favor upon him, Lord. Help the job that that he's supposed to have come straight into his lap and that they have favor upon him, Lord, that they see that this job would suit him, Lord. Just have your hand over his life, Lord. We ask your hand over safe travels for Jerry's sister, Lord. We ask that she would... Uh, get home safely, Lord, that she would enjoy the trip, that it would just be a safe time, Lord, that it would be quick, and when she gets home, that she would be just happy, Lord. Help her to have enjoyed her time here, Lord. Amen. Just uh, be with her, Lord. And Lord, we ask your hand over Cyrus and his testing, Lord. We ask that you would just continue being with him. He said he feels confident about it, Lord. We just ask that you would continue with that confidence, Lord, that he would have the knowledge and understanding of what he's already been taught, Lord, and that you would just provide the knowledge for him, Lord. 
help him to remember those things that uh, he's already studied, that he's already learned, Lord, and that he would apply it during these testing times, Lord. And Lord, we ask your hand over Mary Jane, Lord, to shake this head cold, Lord. I'm sorry, this cold period, Lord. And uh, help her just be fully healed, Lord. Her sinuses, her, her chest, her all of it, Lord. Just all of it to be removed from her, Lord, so that she could be here in entirety, Lord. Not, not stuffed up, not congested, not anything, Lord. No infections, no, no nothing. Just fully here with the joy and energy that she brings, Lord. And Lord, we ask that you would also have your hand over um, Jackie and remove the cough from her, Lord. Help her to have your, her lungs filled to where there is no cough, Lord. It's just fully healed, Lord. We ask this in your name, Lord. We ask your hand over my brother and his hearing tomorrow, Lord. Help him to have your favor, Lord. Help everything to go according to your will, that everything would just go well, Lord. That's what we're asking, Lord, that everything would go well and that he would get everything he needs, Lord. And Lord, uh, we do continue asking your hand over CJ, Lord. We had a great report that he doesn't have autism. So that's a blessing, Lord, from you. And we just ask that you would continue having your hand over him, help him to have a loose tongue to speak, Lord. Just be with him during these times, Lord. Help him to have your hand over his life, Lord, over his family's life, Lord. And Lord, uh, we also ask your hand over the entire church, Lord. Just continue being in this church, Lord. Continue working through us. Continue working in us, Lord. You know everything that we're, we need, Lord. And you know everything that needs to be done, Lord. And we ask that you would just continue providing the needs of this church, Lord, spiritually, physically, mentally. Uh, help us all just to be in your will, Lord. And we ask that uh, you have your hand over uh, <coughs> over Leah, Lord. And uh, just help her, Lord. Whatever she's going through, whatever she's dealing with, whatever's going on in her life, Lord, just be with her, Lord. Help her, Lord, and give her the strength that she needs through you, Lord. Help her to feel your spirit at all times, Lord, and to be full of you, Lord. And Lord, uh, bring unity to not just this church, but every church, Lord. Amen. That all of us would be unified under one spirit Thank that you. is you, Lord, that you call us to be, Lord. Help us to get rid of the religions and our own thoughts, our own beliefs, Lord, that we would just cling to you, Lord, and cling to what you say, Lord. Help there be one church, which is you, Lord. Help us come about in your will, Lord. And help us just seek you more and to find you, Lord. Lord, we ask these things in, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.